Thank you for watching the SMB Forex and Futures Weekly Trade Review. My name is Mark Principato from UnconventionalTrader.com. So in today's segment, I'm going to be looking at the euro dollar in a trade that I had taken earlier this week. And what I want to emphasize in this video is the reason why I exited early. Now before I get into the playback, I want to mention that each week I produce two videos for you to learn from. On Mondays, I do the weekly trade analysis. That consists of analysis in the S&P 500, Euro dollar, pound dollar, and Aussie dollar pairs. The purpose is to give you an idea of what levels are in play and what trading opportunities we can see throughout the week on a broader time frame. So it gives you perspective. The second video that I produce is on Fridays, and this is the weekly trade review. This consists of a trade that was either taken by myself or from one of our students or veteran traders. The purpose is to go back and review why the trade was taken and emphasize or highlight an area of importance about this particular trade that you can learn from. My hope is that you as the trading community can improve your skills and gain more perspective in your own trading by watching these videos. It also gives you some insight into how we train our students and what our students actually learn when they apply these things to their trading. So let's get into the segment. Before I start the playback, I just want to explain some of the reasoning behind the trade. So this trade, again, is in the euro dollar, and it's based on a pattern that we teach at SMB called a trick pattern. This is a very particular setup that is part of the methodology that we use. Now, within this pattern, we can define a particular range. In this case, a support range, because I'm looking for longs. In this range of prices, I'm looking to validate a trade. And that comes in a number of forms. I can validate through volume analysis. I can also validate through price action analysis or the combination of the two. In this example here, I validate using price action analysis. Just so you know, this video was sped up two times in order to condense the amount of time that the video was. This was an eight hour trade. So I condensed that into five minutes. Now, as you can see, um, as I'm moving my arrow around here on the chart, we have the levels defined. And what I have here is an inside bar. This is the inside bar. Okay. So what I want to highlight here is this is the trade that was initiated. All right. Uh, right after the inside bar closed and the break of the high of that bar, I initiated a long position. I put a stop about 25 pips below the most recent low. Now, this particular trade is based on a setup that involves traders overreacting at particular levels and then getting caught in a trade. The resulting pressure will create a squeeze, and that is what I'm looking to capitalize on. Now, this pattern comes with a roadmap, and there are two potential targets. The first target is basically the middle of the way, which is represented by this circle right here. And the second target would be the high of the previous resistance. That's the ultimate target, okay, represented by this circle here. Now, does the trade always make it to that one? No. So as this trade unfolds, remember, this is an hourly chart of the euro dollar. So each bar takes an hour to unfold. And now you'll see how this trade plays out. You can see it's very, very slow. This is summertime trading. You have to have a lot of patience. Now, this trade at this point is just a little bit against me. Here, it's a little bit in my favor by a few pips. As the time goes on, uh, this trade was initiated around noon time, and I tracked it until about 8 p.m., which was going into the Asian session. You'll see it's working its way up toward the target. Everything is great. But where is the problem? And why am I showing this trade to you? Well, as you'll see, as time goes on, it's working. It's a few pips in my favor. And as it approaches the first target area, you'll see that it begins to hesitate. There's the hesitation. Now, this is a very important piece of information because if it's truly strong, it really shouldn't be showing me an inside bar to go short. It shouldn't be really hesitating. But at this point, it's too early to exit. The reason is because it may give you a higher low, just like it did. Now, when you have a higher low, the next move typically should be a higher high if it was truly strong. 
Now remember, these are hours going by. As time goes on here, it's struggling. What is the problem? Why is it hesitating? Time of day, lack of momentum, there are many reasons. What's important to me is it's just not making that higher high. Okay, you can only give a trade so much room. I went into this trade with the expectation of a day trade, meaning I was looking to make maybe 30 to 50 pips sometime intraday, maybe a few hours, maybe a whole day. If it's not behaving or if it's not doing what it should do, if it's not progressing, I have to make adjustments. This is what flexibility is all about. As you can see, I have my higher low. Where is my higher high? I'm constantly questioning the market. Where is my higher high? It's just not happening. As this trade continues to unfold, I'm concerned. I have about 12 pips at this stage. Do I take my money here? No, because I want to give it some room. It's not over yet. So what I do as this trade goes on is I'm preparing to adjust. I'm watching. I don't have to sit here and watch for eight hours straight. I'm watching occasionally. My stop has not been moved to break even. Now at this stage, it's almost at break even. Okay, it's pulled back on me. What you'll notice here is the double top formation on this hourly chart. Now again, this took a number of hours to unfold. Once that double top was confirmed, and you can see the first bearish close and the second bearish close took out the hourly low of that first bearish candle after that second top, that was my exit. Now again, it was not behaving. I should not be seeing this for the amount of time that I allowed this trade to unfold. So what happened after this? Well, eventually the price went to my first target which was around the 3280 area. It went there overnight. I was out of the trade. I broke even basically on it, okay? So the lesson to be learned here is this. When the trade is not behaving properly, based on your expectations, which need to be well-defined, you must make adjustments. Either you move your stop to break even, or you just exit the trade altogether and look for your next opportunity. It's all about being flexible. So I hope you learned a lesson about flexibility and trade management in this video. Thank you for watching. My name is Mark Principato and make sure to visit unconventionaltrader.com so you can give me some feedback on my upcoming book. I'll see you next week.